Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning and uh, you folks that are joining us by radio, television, or we're already streaming on Facebook this morning. So if you're uh, watching the broadcast, I know Brother Steve, when he makes the welcome in a little bit, I invite you to come join us here at Old Bethel. Just going to look over a couple of announcements. Don't forget, of course, uh, uh, Sunday school this morning, immediately following our worship service. And, of course, Wednesday night, uh, our Bible study is at 7 o'clock. Uh, has anybody got any announcements we need to pass along this morning? No announcements. So that's pretty good. So, Okay. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. We got any folks celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? Nobody celebrating anniversaries and stuff. Let's all stand. We're going to look at our prayer concerns this morning. Last week we started a new uh, prayer concern list, so we, there may be some additional names that we need to add to our list. This morning we lift up uh, Klein and Patsy Pounders, Philip and Sharon Reeves, Stacy Elps, Tillman Ivy, Joyce Kimbrew. Uh, Everly Mason, Judy Pruitt, Mike Pruitt, Van Roberts, Tasha Ivy Schroeder, Brian Schroeder, Tasha Strickland, Ashley Tidwell, Andrew Tigner, the Nadine Gann family, and also those that are dealing with their cancer treatments. This morning, our nursing home and homebound members include Miss Yvonne Sharp, uh, Junior Nines Taylor, and also Travis and Jean Wigginton. Is there anyone else that we need to add this morning? We're going to put Abby on and take Everly Mason off. So, Jim Byer. Jim Byer. Lynn Gaddis. Lynn Gaddis. I think Lynn's got another family member, brother-in-law, or something like that. It's, it's Mike's. So. That we need to add to our prayer list this morning. Anyone else? If not, let's have a moment of silence this morning to lift up all the ones that's on our prayer list and pray for our service this morning as uh, I know you'll receive a blessing out of our service this morning. So let's have a moment of silence to lift these folks up this morning and Brother Steve will come dismiss us from our prayer concerns. <laughs> Heavenly Father, it is good to be here in your house today, to be gathered together to, to worship you, uh, to come together and celebrate the love that you have for us, and the love that we share with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of our blessings and all of the help that we've had throughout all of our lives. We, we thank you, Lord, that you have been with us from the moment we, we believed in you to this very moment as we stand here before you. Heavenly Father, as we come before you as your children, Lord, we are mindful of everyone who is on our prayer list, even those who struggle wherever they are in the world, and Lord knows there's, there's struggle throughout our world. And so we pray your mighty hand upon them. We pray, Lord, that for the transformation of hearts and souls that the world may find a way to where it can be at peace with one another. We pray for the healing of those who are sick and struggling. 
We pray in thanksgiving for those who are becoming well or getting well. And, and we pray, Lord, that they'll remember the power and the glory and the grace that you've shown them through the time of their healing. And they'll give you the praise and the honor for it all. Heavenly Father, as we stand here before you, we stand not only as baptized children of God, but as servants of the Lord, each of us called to serve you. And so, Lord, we pray for the opportunity to minister in our world and to our world until the entire world comes to believe in you as we do. Be with us now. Pour out your spirit upon us as we gather together to worship. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everyone here today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. We want to welcome uh, everyone who is joining in with us this morning, whether you're seeing us on YouTube right at this minute or we'll see us later today on or Facebook at this right. minute. Yeah, Facebook and then YouTube later or hear us on the radio or see us on the TV, wherever it is. We are thankful for the opportunity to, uh, to speak with you and, and to minister to you. However, we have the opportunity to do that. We are blessed to be able to speak on behalf of the Lord. And we want to welcome everyone who is, is with us. And it is our prayer and it is our hope that as you go through this hour of worship, that God's Holy Spirit will speak to your heart in a way that, that brings you closer and closer to God, wherever that is. It's a joy to be here. And thank you all for being here. Our first hymn this morning, if you'll all stand and get your hymnal out this morning, we're going to be singing hymn number 577, 577, God of grace and God of glory, 577. standing for our affirmation of faith this morning.
where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father Almighty, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is hymn number 572, 572. Pass it on. This time for ushers will come, we'll receive this morning's regular offering and that'll be followed by our building fund offering.
Well, we got one more song this morning before we turn it over to Brother Steve. And the morning message this morning is called The Beginning. So we're ready for that in just a minute. Our next hymn is hymn number 593. And it's Here I Am, Lord. 593. We'll turn it over to Brother Steve for this morning's message. This morning, if you have your Bibles with you and would like to join with me in reading, we're reading from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. 
And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words. There's a bit of a mystery surrounding Christ in the scriptures. There are years of his life, years of his life that are unknown to us. We, we don't know what all happened. There have been some books written that offer insights in, from ancient texts, but they've never been considered authoritative, so they did not or were not included with the story of Christ as it is found in Scripture. Now, last week when we read of Christ, it was believed that he was between two, somewhere close to two years old, or close to that at least. There would be one more story that would identify him as 12. But from that point on, we have little to nothing to draw from. Eighteen years later, Jesus would emerge again. Eighteen years of growing up like all the other boys. Eighteen years of learning a trade. Eighteen years of silence from the Messiah. That is, until the day he arrived on the banks of the Jordan River. It was at that time, and in that moment, but everything about Christ began to change. The world from that moment on would never be the same. Everything that makes Jesus who he is, it all began there in the Jordan River. It's strange, isn't it, that he would choose to do that, that he would come to be baptized by John, all of us here believe that Jesus was without sin, that he was God's perfect lamb. And yet he goes to John to be baptized. We often think of baptism as the means in which our sins are symbolically washed away. But the truth is this. It isn't just that, is it? For us, yes, we need that symbol of the holy cleansing because it honors for us what Christ did on the cross for us. We need, we need the everlasting grace it promises because we, we know the truth about ourselves. We know all there is about ourselves that many of us, that many of us, that those sins we washed away in that moment of faith will later find their way back into our lives in the years that are ahead of us to grieve our hearts and to send us back to Christ for forgiveness. We find ourselves needing to be prayerfully cleansed again through God's holy grace. But baptism, baptism is more than the cleansing of sins. Jesus did not need to do that. Baptism serves a, a, another great purpose. It serves to testify to God and to the world of a new beginning. Jesus left Nazareth and arrived on the banks of the Jordan to John's baptism to begin a new and, and different life than he'd had before. To some, he was just a carpenter's son. But to God, he was his son with a mission and a purpose he was born to serve. Jesus left what was old and familiar to him and he began something new. He began to teach and preach what God had brought him in the world to do. Sometimes we allow ourselves to think of our baptism as the goal, the ultimate moment when we reach for and claim the saving grace of God. But it is not the goal, nor is it the destination. That is not the end of the journey or even our relationship with the church and God's work in our lives. Baptism, in truth, is just the beginning. It is the beginning of living your life for and with Christ. Jesus began his ministry the moment that he, he stepped up out of the water. 
he began to accept who he was. And he began to live his life in a way that spoke of and glorified God. He began shaping and, and making the world into a different place. Our call from our baptism is no less than the call that Christ accepted. We are not called to die on the cross for the sake of the sins of others, but we are called. We are called to be difference makers in the world that we live in. Make no mistake about it, our baptism was intended. It was intended to equip us for life, for a life of living according to God's will, for loving God and, and loving each other. It was meant to send us out into the world with a, a living testimony as to the power of Christ in our lives. The power that God can give to, to any life. Each of us, all of us, are a living testimony and an example that the forgiveness of God and the grace he offers makes a real difference in our lives and the world we live in. Jesus began his work on behalf of God's wishes and intent. And we are all called, each of us, every one of us, to know less than Jesus was. It is to answer the call God has upon our life. It is to begin God's work in this world, a work that everyone who professes his name is called to take upon themselves at their baptism. No, baptism is not the destination. It is not the culmination. It is the beginning. It is the beginning of a life lived as a testimony to what God means to each of us. Jesus left the banks of the Jordan. And he battled with Satan and just about anyone who would do or say anything that reeked of injustice. He battled with the self-righteous and the judgmental. He tore down walls of prejudice and bias. He confronted hypocrisy. He revealed a Father God who sought to teach the world that to love God and neighbor was to live supremely in God's will. To do anything else, to do anything else was a disappointment that given over to could one day lead to our destruction. He served God's call. His baptism was the moment he chose to leave the life of a, of a carpenter in Nazareth to begin as God's evangelist to the world. But he was more than just a man who could charm listeners with his words of wisdom, wasn't he? Jesus looked around. If we read the scriptures, Jesus looked around him and he saw, he saw people. And when he did, the scriptures tell us often that he had compassion on them. They were like lost and, and hungry sheep with no shepherd. They needed caring for. They needed help. They needed miracles. And so he served those needs as he could. The blind were made to see. The hungry were fed. And the crippled walked. Sins were forgiven and grace was offered. The haughty were confronted and the least of these were comforted. He spoke to people. He touched people. The young and the old were made whole by him. He served the needs that they could not meet for themselves. At his baptism, he began serving the people he was sent to save and redeem. The testimony of God's power was not, was not only on his lips. The testimony of God's power in his life was present in the things that he did. His hands and his feet made his words and his life come to life before their very eyes and ears of the most bewildered. There was no one he would not serve. There was no one he would not touch. There was no one he would not come to. If help were needed, he would provide it if he could. It was that service that made everything that he did, everything that he ever said, believable. Yes, he walked the walk that was needed to give power to his talk. For those of us who have professed Christ at our baptism, Jesus was a living example of what baptism means. It meant from that moment on, 
Our lives were never meant to be lived in a way that served only our own good. Our lives were meant to be lived in a way that served God's will and the need of others, needs of others around us who needs us. Baptism is, is meant to call us into the service of the Lord. It is meant for us to take our place in shaping life in this world so that one day we can see, we can see for ourselves the kingdom of God on earth. Isn't that exactly what Jesus meant when he prayed? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That cannot happen. It will not happen until we understand that at our baptism, we are called to a higher purpose and greater meaning. Just as Christ called himself a servant, so are we to be God's servants. Jesus left the river Jordan to fulfill what God had sent him to do. To begin saving and serving the work that God had called him to. But before he left, before he left, God spoke. God spoke the most important words I think anyone could ever want to hear. This is my beloved son, he said. In whom I am well pleased. God spoke of his affection for Jesus. But I say to you this. Those words are true. At the baptism of every one of God's children. Baptism marks a new beginning. It marks a call to serve. But more importantly. It confirms who we are. We are children of God. We are children of his own creating. Just as Jesus was. God's love for us is no less than his love for his son. We are a part of God's family. We are one with Christ and one with God. Baptism marks the moment when a believer comes to the place where they know to whom they belong. They are a beloved child of God. And at the moment of their baptism, they become a source of pleasure to God. That is why we baptize children in the Methodist church. The moment they come into our world, we send a message to God and to all who will listen. Our children are a gift from God. They belong to God and in God's family, just like the rest of us do. And then we nurture them into the faith until the day comes that they can profess and accept it for themselves. Until they are ready to begin their walk with God. To serve Christ as we have each sought to serve him. Baptism acknowledges who we belong to. We become a part of God's own family. And God calls us his child. My beloved. William Kincaid tells this story. A pastor offered these words after baptizing a child. Little sister, he said, by this act of baptism we welcome you to a journey that will take your whole life. This isn't the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of God's experiment with your life. What God will make of you, we know not. Where God will take you, surprise you, we cannot say. But what we do know, and this we can say, God is more than happy to be with you. That may be the most wonderful thing about baptism. Knowing we belong to the God who created us. And that he finds joy. And he is pleased. To welcome us into his family. It all began for Christ that day. His life in Nazareth behind him. His ministry and mission before him. 
His baptism was the, was the confirmation that he had accepted the presence and the call of God upon his life. It was a pleasing day for God to see his child begin to change the world forever. It always is. Our closing. The altar is open to anyone who'd like to come. I invite you to come at this time. We'll be singing page 395, Take Time to Be Holy. Jesus, holy name.